What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Sideline Show. Then Mike and Keto here with you, as always. Yes, Keto, man, we got to five different games in the Winnipeg High School Football League this week. Love it. Every level, every division. Uh, this is a great time of year. Yeah, it's a great time of year. You know, September is our actual birthdays. Oh, yeah, my you guy. Know? <laughs> you <laughs> know what it is. Birthdays, and at the end of the day, um, it's beautiful weather. You know, it starts to change the weather. It's not too cold. It's not too hot. And, um, you know, it's the best time for football because it leads up to the playoffs, you know, right in October. And um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month coming up as well. But, you know, I think in terms of just being at the uh, midweek of September, we've been doing our show for the past couple weeks. And um, being able to go out to all these football games, I'm so excited to talk about what we saw this past week. Absolutely, Keto. So am I. We had tons of great action this week. We also got the chance to sit down with Commissioner Jeffrey Baden from the yeah. WHSFL for a new monthly feature we're doing with him. And also some rifles content. Got, got to give some love to the Grey yes, Gunners, sir. man. They're having a good season yes, out there sir. as well. So stay tuned for all that later in the program. But we're starting things off in Springfield, man. Yes. Oak Bank, Manitoba. Springfield Sabres with their first game in the WHSFL taking on Fort Francis. Goodness gracious, a lot of toughness out there, a lot of tenacity. Yeah. That was a very fun game to be Yeah, at. it was a definitely fun game to be at. One of my favorite parts of being out in the country of Oak Bank is the people, you know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, like, we also got to go on top of the big truck, <laughs> go see the game from, like, the, like, 20 feet up. And it was really solid, man, because you know what? Like, that's the type of stuff that I like, the creativity that's going on out there. And we even saw that the, the locker room was built in into the, into the truck that we were on. So it was really awesome to just be out there, see some football, and, um, you know, just being out there with the boys. Absolutely, man. That trailer is incredibly cool. Yeah. That's, that's pretty unique. You don't right. get that often. Elevated view. And they treated us nicely out there. Yeah. Actually, even guys from Springfield, they came and shook our hands after yeah. the game. Thank you, everyone that did that. And, yeah, uh, yeah just a great game to be in, man. Check out some of the highlights. turnout today and the weather 
came through for us. The kids came through. Let's see where it goes from here. Transitioning now to some Div 1 action in the WHSFL. Defending Division 1 champion Vincent Massey Trojans taking on the 1-0 Oak Park Raiders. Both teams 1-0 going into mm -hmm. this contest. And Vincent Massey, they were ranked 7th in the nation. Yes. Okay, uh, Keto, talk to me a little bit about that. I mean, like, is there a little bit of intimidation when you face a team that, that, that's that high up? Is there expectations of, as a program to live up to that? Yeah, I mean, what's it like if you're ranked that high? And you probably have some experience playing against teams that were ranked that high or maybe being on the other end. Yeah, you know what? In, in college, I was very fortunate to be able to win three MAC championships, even be ranked in, um, 17th out of 150 NCAA Division I teams before. So. I've been on the winning side of it and on the losing side of it. So uh, when you when you do go in with a ranked tag on you and the, uh, as a ex, um, as a former champion, you are going to have the target on your back, and every team is going to understand that that game for them is a, most likely the championship in their eyes, right? So they're going to bring everything that they can. And um, you know, I thought um, Oak Park was going to do a lot better today than they did. I know they have some. Um, guys, key players out right now, so they weren't able to be full, fully intact. But, um, you know, I think one thing that the Trojans did was they, they really stamped their mark. You know, they played like a number seven team in the nation, and uh, the scoreboard kind of showed that. So it's, it was really good to see them actually be able to, to handle the game the way they did. Um, but I, I know at the same time, you know, being Oak Park as well, um, I think they'll they'll be able to bounce back from this as well. Oak Park's well coached, obviously for sure. They actually have uh, uh, Rod Hill, I think, uh, alumni of the Bombers, yeah. helping out with them as well. Uh, but yeah, Mass is just so dangerous, especially at running back with Negus Lewin and yeah. with Ishe Matanga in yeah. the backfield. They got a lot of weapons. Check out some of the highlights.
despite losing that game, uh, Keto, there was definitely some big plays from Oak Park, namely from Justice Flett. You just yeah. saw him at the end of the, of the highlights there pulling yeah. together a pretty massive play. And yeah. he's been impressive through the first couple of weeks of the season as the leader of that receiving core. Yeah, you know, he's actually been made, able to make some solid plays. And the one thing I do got to say about the kid that I really liked is um, that he never gave up um, playing. You know, even though they were, they were getting down, um, they were getting beat by a tremendous uh, amount of points. Uh, he kept on playing. He kept on competing, and that's what the team did. I, I like the character of Oak Park and how they finished the game, um, but I do got to give him a shout-out for that last catch. Um, you know, we, we, we thought the game was done, <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, as you can see from the angle that we got, we got barely all of it, but I'll explain it to how it went. He went up in between two, um, two defenders, catches it, and miraculously actually stays up on his feet and actually ends the game with the touchdown. And I thought that was really cool because, you know, uh, unfortunately, Jeremy, our camera guy, didn't get it. But that's my, my bad. <laughs> but, you know, at the end of the day, yo, we have so much more great highlights for you about all the other games. And, um, you know, Justice, hey, keep doing your thing, man. So we caught some Div 2 action as well. Yeah. Kildonan East taking on Daniel Mack. Kildonan East able to come up with the victory in that game, yeah. posting a shuttle for the second consecutive week yes. in terms of Div 2 action. KE, man, they've been riled up this year. They were voted 12th under 12 in the coaches' poll yep. uh, coming into this season. And Coach Hawkins actually said they, I think they wrote that in the locker room. <laughs> yeah. So there's some extra motivation there. Yeah. And they stepped up big. Yeah, they definitely did. You know, a lot of young guys, I love the fact that, you know, Coach Hawk. Um, was able to put that out as, as a visual and just cross it down <laughs> as they're going through the season, keeping motivation. I think it's really good, a good challenge to, to your team, you know what I'm saying? And, the, and for the guys to be able to respond the way they have and using that as motivation, I'm definitely feeling as if they're definitely, you know, going to compete as one of the top teams in, in this division. It was a rainy game, so obviously weather was a bit of a factor. And Daniel Mack was playing with lower numbers. I believe by the time the game ended, they were only about 13 or 14. So I want to give a shout out to everybody on Daniel Mack's yeah, roster sure. that pushed through that contest and showed sure. a lot of heart, yes. a lot of tenacity, uh, and did just a great job of, yeah, I mean, making it through the contest. Yeah. And, and um, yeah, Riley Redsky was one of the guys on their team yeah. that had a really good game. And, yeah, I yeah, just want to give them all a shout out for working hard and, and doing everything they could in, in a great contest against Kildonan East. for sure. Pivoting now to JV action, 12 man. Grant Park versus Oak Park and Vincent Massey versus Dakota. Man, Keto, honestly, it's a lot of fun going to watch JV games. That's the future right yeah. there. And I mean, honestly, you've seen in the past how valuable having a strong JV team can be. Yes. Look at Vincent Massey and the success that they have year yes. in and year out. Look at Grant Park as well, being able to develop those 10s into 11 yes. now uh, and developing a strong program. And quite frankly, Dakota as well is a great yeah. example of that. Yeah. So all six programs in the JV-12 do an excellent job of grooming those guys. Yeah. And they've got a lot of talent. Yeah, they do have a lot of talent. You know, I think at the end of the day, um, also to add into what you're talking about, the development, um, a lot of that also comes from the MMFA where those peewee guys actually go into the JV teams. And you can see right now where uh, two of the stronger teams in the JV division, Grant Park being one in Dakota as well, uh, from the past games that we've seen, even though this is the first regular season game that they've had, 
is the fact that a lot of those kids that played on those two teams were actually from a couple championships mm. these past couple years in the MMFA. So it's pretty funny. If you actually really kind of look at um, what's going on down in the MMFA, the Pee Wee division, you can see as they come up to JV, uh, the, the, the majority of those groups, they kind of still stay strong in those schools. So um, the coaches that are looking at those Pee Wee guys, you know, uh, that's, where, that's where I believe it really does start and it goes into where they cultivate them in JV. And obviously, varsity does the rest when they, go, when they get there. It certainly helps for sure when you've got, for example, like Grand Park can pull from like Cordon yes, in that exactly. area. St. Vitale, obviously, for Dakota. Right. So there are certain areas of the yes. city where you can pull. You get yes. East Side, well, exactly. you know, KE, and yes. stuff like that. Yes. certainly helps for sure. And I mean, yeah, big shout out to all the coaches and everybody that makes that uh, a reality once you get up to JV and varsity.
This past Friday, I had the opportunity to sit down with WHSFL commissioner and friend of the show, Jeffrey Bannon, to go over a number of different things. Jeffrey's in his first year as the commissioner of the WHSFL, but he's well known in the province for the work he's done as a coach, as well as being involved with the Blue Bombers and just a class act all the way around. Among the topics that we discussed in this month's uh, feature would be going to a number of different schools in the off season just to check in and make sure that they knew that there would be a uh, commissioner's presence to support them, as well as the first annual coaches poll, among a couple of other things. Uh, really, uh, really excited to get this going and uh, yeah, to, just to sit down with Jeffrey. Mike's still here for the Sideline Showdown, here with Jeffrey Bada. Jeffrey, what's up, man? How you doing? Uh, it's like Christmas. This is the inaugural <laughs> game out in Oak Bank for Springfield. Uh, seeing these kids in this program happen, this is, I can't describe how I'm feeling today. This is great. Yep. First year as commissioner, two weeks into it. How are you feeling so far, man? Uh, you know, when you love this game and things come to fruition, and you see these kids on the field and you see everything happen, you see things come together, you realize you're just a small part in the big picture. And... Uh, I get goosebumps talking football, Mike. You know I love this. It's, 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 it's going great. Absolutely. It's a pleasure working with you as well. Likewise, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. One yep. of the things we did over the offseason was come up with a coach's poll idea, which went into fruition yep. this year. Yep. First year ever uh, where it was just the coaches voting on yep. who they felt from the all three divisions, you know, 1 to 12 yep. or 1 to 6. And um, I would say it was a pretty good success. Um, you noticed there was definitely discussion. You went to KE, I believe, and they were booing you out the building when you went down. I, I, went to, I, I love <laughs> KE, by the way. Yeah, uh, you love KE. I yeah. love Kidoni. So we, I went to the parent meeting, and that was the day right after it was released. And I get up there, and we talk about it, and some of the parents are like, we saw the coaches poll. And I'm like, I didn't vote more than once, right? <laughs> but then they won, they're like 2-0. and oh. So, like, maybe this coaches poll is... Remember, it's just like how the CFL coaches, I mean, the CFL reporters come out. It's just a poll. So to everyone out there, especially KE, love you. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say, I mean, uh, I was at KE's game with yep. uh, the sideline show crew yesterday, and yep. we got a talk, chance to talk to Coach Hawkins after the game. And yep. he was saying they actually wrote that up in their locker room. They have it written down where they were in the yep. poll. So stuff like that, in this case, I think yep. is actually maybe motivating to, to a team. Indirectly, right? Of course. I mean, because results... They, you know, you got to do it on the field. I mean, your numbers are just numbers, right? But it's cool to see that it's at least firing up some of the guys and, and you know, creating some discussion. I think that's why we did it. I think that's the big reason why. When you're talking about the Winnipeg High School Football League, we win, right? So at the end of the day, I still love you, KE, you know? But at, at the end of the day, it's just, it's just about coaches understanding. And then when we do, if we do a mid-season poll, then we, but remember, at the end of the day, it's who wins their last game. So a uh, coach's poll or an athlete poll really doesn't make a difference. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's, it gets people talking about the Winnipeg High School Football League. And you and I both know we love social media. We, we love to get the conversation started. Uh, so let's keep it going. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. And thank you to all the coaches that voted in that. It really helped us out. Uh, got, a, got a lot of feedback from that, which was great. Jeffrey, what, uh, what have some of the funnest parts of the job been for you so far? I mean, I know you're very busy. And you know, obviously, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. But uh, have you had the chance to sit down and just reflect and be like, wow, like, this is really, you know, these are, you know an, uh, this is an amazing opportunity or certain things about it that have really made you go, wow. I love this league or you know wow like I, I have more of an appreciation for certain things afterwards well I appreciate what the coaches do uh, and then I love watching the coming to practice now not coaching but coming to practice and understand and it's taking a step back and go well these coaches know what they're talking about you always know what coaches talk about but when they see the fundamentals where they teach safe tackling you know when they teach the small things and then coming and meeting all the athletes uh, getting to getting to know them uh, threatening to suspend them if they don't follow us on Instagram small things like that <laughs> you know what I mean but at, at the end of the day it's about stepping back able to help and then just seeing how the league works and operates it's, it's just it's such a, a large entity and it works smoothly yeah. absolutely i think you know one of the funnest parts about the whole thing is just seeing it all come together when the season starts yeah uh, you know being able to see all these teams on here with high numbers i would say for the most part we've got solid numbers yeah. you know mostly all across the board um you know from from your perspective i mean like how great is that to see just the the that the teams have bought in but the fans too and everybody is just they just love the game and just out here supporting their squads you, you know it takes it doesn't take an athlete, it takes a couple of coaches, it takes the parents, it takes the families, it takes the friends. And then when you have, like, we're out here today and it's almost like standing room only, uh, it's, it's something that it makes you feel proud to be part of. And then you realize that when you go to almost every single game across this league, the fans are there. You know what I mean? So it, it, it begs to go, that do we, are we doing things right? And then when you step back and you're like, we are, right? So like I said, it comes to coaches, family and, and athletes, especially the guys at KE. Love you. <laughs> Big shout out again. Yeah. Uh, you've gotten the opportunity to travel to a lot of camps yeah. over the summer. You you made a, uh, a habit of doing yeah. that, of making sure to go into Portage. I think you were at uh, out in Steinbach as yeah. well. Obviously, you went to a lot of the local teams yeah. and visited them also. Why did you do that? Why is it so important to visit these teams during the, the, the summer training? Well, they have to know who we are. They have to know if they have an issue, who they can talk to, uh, answer any questions. But also, sometimes, you know, we're, 
we, we're the league, but we're not the league. We're, we're just like them, right? We're football people. We, we love the game. Uh, and just to introduce my introduce myself, you know, took over for Commissioner Hank Witcher. Did a phenomenal job. Uh, and like I said, it's the it's just shaking hands, giving out some hugs, and showing the appreciation for what they do because our league is nothing without them. Oh, I appreciate what you do as well, Jeffrey. It's always great catching up with you and working with you too. Thanks, man. I appreciate <laughs> it. I love you, Katie. Since November of 2015, Jordy Wilson has done an absolutely tremendous job as the head coach of the Winnipeg Rifles. Year after year, they've gotten better, and year after year, he's been able to establish a culture and a mindset within the program. We've seen that really being instilled this year, where the team has played tough against Saskatoon as well as Regina, two of the perennial powerhouses in the Prairie Football Conference. This past week, I had the opportunity to sit down with running backs coach Eric Ewan in his first season to talk about some of the talent they've got on the offensive side of the ball, as well as starting quarterback Riley Noyox in regards to why the offense has been so success successful through the air for the Rifles this season. Mike Still for the Sideline Showdown here with Winnipeg Rifles starting quarterback Riley Noyox. Riley, how are you doing tonight, man? I'm, I'm pretty good. With Winnipeg Rifles running backs coach Eric Ewan. How are you doing tonight, Eric? Oh, not bad. Can't complain. Let's talk about this running backs group that we've yeah. got here. We've got a, a great combination of backs, obviously led by Urch, Brandon Urchielli, yeah. who was fresh off Bombers cap, yeah. but also Matte Mitsiango, yeah. who also sees time as slot back. You try to get yeah. him involved as much as yeah. possible. Yeah, like we, we talk about getting touches for both guys, and for Matte, it's, it's, you know, we're trying to get him about 15 plus touches, but not just on the ground, but try to get through the air, because he's just a, a mismatch, a mismatch and a nightmare for a lot of teams. And so we try to get him in space and try to make him use his his abilities to his best to his advantage. Um, and then with Urch, he's your downhill physical thumper. So you got thunder and lightning in the backfield, and we're trying to find ways to get the ball to both guys. And it's just been a you know pleasure to have those two guys in the backfield. The team is one and two so far, but huge asterisk there. Week one, you face the defending national champs Saskatoon, the five-time defending national yeah. champs, and you, you play them close, and then Regina. Labor Day weekend, 52-45, probably, not probably, definitely the best game of your junior football career. Oh yeah, for sure. How did you feel out there during that, that Regina game? Um, honestly, it was probably the most dialed in I've ever been. I, I kind of, I felt really good going into the game, and I, obviously I really wanted to beat them, and I just, I don't know, a lot of it is just, you know, you get into the game, you start getting into a groove, and you start feeling it, and then, you know, you get results like that, right? So. Yeah, I, obviously, I felt great about the game. It's just that I was pretty upset after because, you know, you want the win. As many, as many yards as you throw for, as many touchdowns as you might get, uh, it doesn't count really when it's you don't get that important win column, right? What's your relationship like with the backs you've got here? Uh, it, it's a great, it's a great rela relationship. I let them kind of do whatever they need to do. I'm not, I'm not going to be yelling at them. I'm always going to be positive. Uh, that's how I am. I'm not going to be yelling. I'm just a smooth talker. I just let them do what they need to do, um, and just, just, just let them be who they can be. And uh, that's what I, that's what I entrust in my running backs. As long as you show up and do your work, that's all I'm going to be happy about with, with them. What are some of the elements of your game you feel like you've improved the most since you started your junior, junior football career? I think a lot of it has to do with decision making, you know, like uh, maybe two years ago when I was a rookie, you know, slinging the ball around, I wasn't making half the decisions I was making. You know, last year we watched a little bit of film from when we played Saskatoon and I, I was missing obvious reads and, and uh, I think my athleticism has come a long way from when I came out of high school to now. Because uh, I don't know, I just I'm, I feel like I'm finally understanding how to play at the next level, and I don't know, it's all just coming together for me. I think. Awesome. Well, all the best, Eric. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mike. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Riley. Been great to follow your progression yeah. as well. All the best <laughs> the rest of this year going forward. Thank you. Thanks again to everybody that's tuned in and supported the sideline showdown so far. We really appreciate your support. It's going to be a solo show next week. Your boy here uh, going to be doing it alone. Keto, you're down in the States getting some good content. Yeah, you know what? I'm going back to where I was raised in South Florida. I'm going to be able to go back and see some uh, 
my old high school playing a homecoming game, as well as my college team at Central Michigan University playing Miami in a big game. So hopefully we get an upset there. <laughs> but um, anyways, um, yeah, we're just going to go out there and um, just kind of um, go interview some guys as well, some scouts and um, some different people that we want to really bring into this whole entire show and actually educate you guys on how to what it is to be playing in NCAA as a Canadian, as well as how to get there. And, um, you know, just kind of giving more of information. I know right now we've always been kind of doing a lot of highlights, but we want to start also educating you guys on the process and how things work as well. So I'm going to be down next week. It's going to be your show. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we're just going to grab a whole bunch of content. Hopefully it looks good, but, yeah. Yeah, we have a really cool show for sure next week. First of all, stay tuned for Keto's Corner. Yeah, That's going to be a, yeah. a fun thing, sort of discussing what you just mentioned. But yeah, stay tuned next week for also a, a bit of a feature I did on Aaron Kasimba down at Elmwood and his relationship with John Kiesman, yeah. the offensive coordinator down at the Wood. Uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. Also going to get out to Steinbach and Grand Park and JV action and some Div 3 action between Nealon and Fort Francis, as well as some other stuff planned. Obviously, we've got the Bison's content we're going to throw in there as well, get some Rifles content also. So always some fun stuff planned and really excited to bring all that stuff for you next week as well. Be sure to check us out on social media, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And for sure on YouTube, check out our raw interviews yeah. that we've done uh, for, for the full breakdowns of, of interviews we've done with players and coaches and all that stuff. Thanks again for tuning in, and we will see you next week. <laughs> I have to throw that in there. <laughs>